very sad situation. A teen has to wear headphones to school because of the extreme racism being launched at her by those at the institution. Put up the picture for a man. A suburban St. Louis school is being called out by the family of a girl who has had to endure racist verbal assault to the point of using headphones in school, having to wear them, having to wear them on the bus also to drown out the racism. The school, according to Lesh Moore, the mother of the girl, has taken no tangible action to remedy the issues and protect her daughter. Quote, my job as a parent is to protect my kids, Ms. Moore said, adding, it's nerve wrenching. It is heartbreaking. It's disturbing, and I'm tired of it, according to KMOV. The student's aunt, Tamara King, said her niece was called the N word several times a week. Quote, my niece gets on the bus and she hears the words, I hate N words, King said. Her very first day riding the school bus, the first thing she hears is, oh my God, here comes another colored person. End quote. Do you know how hard that was for her? The sisters, Moore and King, believe the district had an obligation to protect the student and has failed to do so. According to them, officials have not communicated with them about the repeated incidents of racism targeting the child. And to their knowledge, none of the perpetrators have been expelled from the school, which is roughly 85% white. There was a young lady at homecoming who was called the N word and left called the N-word left and right at the high school, King remarked, asserting that their relative's trauma is not a standalone. As a result, on Monday, October 2nd, they sent a letter to the board and other administrators to address their concerns, all right? Let's put it up. So the uh, Wentzville School District has now released a statement saying they are committed to diversity. And insisting they are committed to fostering an environment free from harassment and discrimination. They have not indicated any action towards solving the issue, but state they, quote, welcome both parents and students to report instances of civil rights violations. This is unsurprising given the district's history with racism and bigotry, particularly on their own board. In 2020, a petition was launched to remove a WSD school board member. A racist comment she made on social media. Her comments were called out by a student in the school newspaper. You're looking at it. Now, what did she say? What did, did the school board member decide to write? Sandy Garber. Really? Black Lives Matter? Question mark. The real truth is that black lives only matter if a white person texts the wife of someone who is black. Black on black doesn't count. That doesn't fit the narrative of the left wing Looney Tunes, everything that is going on and our beloved, end quote. I know that sounds fragmented and obviously bigoted and racist, but that's what the person wrote. Um, That person provides leadership. Or the educational system. Similarly, as they responded to Moore and King, the district released a statement expressing its commitment to diversity. The petition to have that person removed, Garber removed, was signed by over 11,000 people in that local community. However, she was not removed. She was allowed to remain on the board until a term ended in 2022 and did not run in 2023 to defend her seat. Incidentally, That school board member released a manifesto of sorts in response, detailing her aims and beliefs as a board member. Among her many points, she states that she wants no critical race theory, training for staff, nor similar programs for students. She also expressed her support of book banning, specifically referencing her dismay when a motion passed to reverse her book ban for minor children as she lost the votes. 
Ironically, one of her points is also accountability for everyone in the district. After griping about being falsely accused of being racist by the president of the teachers union, she goes on to link PragerU videos as a reference to the real history of slavery and how to end systematic racism. To reiterate, she was not removed and she stayed for the duration of her entire term, even with all of that rhetoric. So there is a cultural issue in this school district. It is not a one off. It is not just this one student. It never happens by way of one person. This is a culture dynamic. It doesn't matter what the rules say. What matters is what the culture dictates. And the culture has dictated they are willing to protect racist individuals in their local community. And until I see evidence otherwise, my statement stands. This child deserves to be protected. This is a child. And when you do not protect the child, you then give you give encouragement to the behavior of those children who are adversarial to her and acting out racism inside of that school system because that's what they learned from their parents. Now, at some point, the behavior has to be correct. All right, sharing thoughts here. Yeah, you, your statement does need to stand. You know, I was in St. Louis for a short time. I, I was treated well there, but I was uh, wide eyed and amazed. Uh, it was during the era of Michael Brown. And I wondered how it could pop off that way, Dr. Ritchie, in this area. But people don't realize East St. Louis had race riots. St. Louis never did. And I had not seen such a, a supported uh, infrastructure, if you will, for systemic racism as I did. I'm, I'm sorry, in, wow. in St. Louis. Wow. Wow. All right. Um, obviously, we will bring you updates as they develop.